Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, three attacks on police in the last 24 hours. One demotion and easy sentences for naval officers. And Ben Padarath and lawyer convicted of forgery. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. A man is in custody after allegedly trying to attack his partner and a special constable at the Ndalainovesi Community Police Post in Lamy this morning. While no one was injured in the harrowing incident, the Acting Deputy Commissioner of Police, Itendra Naya, is appealing to the public to work with them and refrain from acts of violence or face the full brunt of the law. Maggie Boyle reports. Normally the place to report a crime, today the police post is a crime scene. In fact, he was armed with uh, cane knives, I'm told, too. And then he started, uh, you know, in that uh, time he was uh, wanting to assault the police officer and the, the, the wife. Uh, the police officer intervened and took control of the situation. ACP Nair explained the drunk assailant smashed the windows of the police post and tried to bust down the door. The special constable who was on duty is being hailed for her bravery in protecting the complainant and carrying out her oath as an officer. Meanwhile, ACP Nair is appealing to the public to work with them. We will not take this lightly and uh, we will ensure that uh, we are able to use resources to our disposal so that, uh, you know, if our police officers get beaten, that's the last that we would want. So we'll use resources uh, so that we can be able to get the perpetrators of this crime. Eyewitnesses on a bus passing by captured this footage, which clearly shows a number of police officers had to be called in to help defuse the situation and take the assailant into custody. ACP Nair maintains that the Delana Vesi police post will remain operational despite the damage it sustained, which is expected to be repaired in the coming days. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Meanwhile, a 25-year-old man charged with one count of aggravated robbery attacked two police officers in the Suva High Court today. The incident happened when escorting police officers who tried to take Demesi Atulanga out of the courtroom after his case was heard. However, he didn't want to leave the courtroom and started throwing punches at the two officers. Atulanga was then arrested and taken to the cell block. In 2016, Atulanga allegedly threw a stone at a police vehicle and also assaulted a detective sergeant. And in another attack on police yesterday, empty beer bottles and stones were hurled at officers when they were trying to stop a break-in at a supermarket in Nakasi. The police vehicle bonnet was damaged as a result and the front windshield smashed from the stoning. The general court-martial has handed a lenient sentence to the four Navy officers found responsible for the grounding of Arifin S. Kiro on July 14, 2016. The four, Lieutenant Commandant Saula Tui Levuka, Lieutenant Samuel Vikaitonga, Lieutenant Ben Salavakao and Ensign Mike Brown, appeared before the six-member judge panel at the RFMF barracks in Nambour today. Akusita Tale has been following the case and filed this report. After four weeks of deliberation behind closed doors at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks, the General Court Martial handed a severe reprimand sentence or last warning and fine of 28 days of salary to Lieutenant Commander Saula Twilevuka, Lieutenant Ben Salatakao and Ensign Mike Brown. President Judge Commander Netani Sukanevalu told the court the six-member panel of judges waived their decision based on the fact that this was a first offense for each of them, their unblemished service records, their mitigating factors, and guilty pleas on the first day of the hearing. He also noted the prosecution summary on sentencing, the judge advocate's sentencing brief, and consideration of national security and operational readiness of the Fiji Navy. The court also considered the fact the Navy officers and crew were not provided counseling after the incident. The general court martial demoted Lieutenant Samuel Adikaitonga to the rank of sub-lieutenant. Adikaitonga was the commanding officer of RFNS Kiro when the incident happened. He was also given a severe reprimand sentence and fined with regards to his salary for 28 days. 
Judge Commander Sukana Ivalu says these sentences will deter offenders or other people from committing offenses of similar nature. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Civil lawyer Aseri Vakalaloma and businessman Benjamin Padarath were convicted of one count each of forgery by the Suva Magistrates Court this afternoon. The two were charged by the Fiji Independent Commission against corruption nine years ago. Pranita Prakash reports. Aseri Vakalaloma and businessman Benjamin Padarath were convicted of forging the Articles of Association of BECP Engineering Construction Fiji Limited in October 2009. They did this by creating a page and changing the particulars of subscribers from Adishwar Padarat of 57 Duncan Road Domain Suva to Vorenge Beni Marama of 228 Ratusukuna Road Domain Suva. Vakaloloma signed as a witness to the signature while Padarat signed as one of the subscribers. The pair have been given seven days for mitigation and sentencing submission. The matter has been adjourned to next Tuesday. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Vandalism is a major concern for the Fiji Roads Authority. Chief Executive Jonathan Moore says since January, their assets such as bus stops have sustained damages worth $20,000. However, he says there has been a drop in vandalism cases as they are receiving a few reports. Um, but we have seen this as something of an improvement. We don't, we don't see the same level as uh, we did before, uh, which is encouraging. Um, but it is, we're always conscious of it and it's always a problem for us. We want to make sure that people respect the, the town or the city and they respect the assets as well. And these aren't cheap. These things cost a lot of money. We don't want them damaging for, just for no reason. Still to come, teenager charged with murder in road fatality. And ministry urges youth to volunteer before taking employment. Stay with us. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, Gong and Nakas, or the Wagarong and Bulafe, Nambando and Asir. Oya was it size, Lambasa, and the Teletan of Rome and Bulafe, Nambado and Sir. We have the Tumeli, Aquana Town of Hinatoka, Teletakin and Avaro and Bulafe, Nambando and Asir. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakan and Bulafe, Nambando and Asir. Bula FM, Nambado and Asir. A 19-year-old man alleged to have caused the death of a 7-year-old girl on Saturday night has been remanded in custody by the magistrate's court. Deepa Kumar is charged with one count of murder. The incident occurred at the junction of Foster Road and Thamavoy Wai in Lamy. The accused allegedly ran into the victim who was crossing the road with an adult and another child. The magistrate transferred the matter to the High Court where Kumar was told he can formally apply for bail. The matter has been adjourned to August 7th. The Australian woman alleged to have been involved in the unlawful importation of illicit drugs and ammunition on Denarau last month appeared in the Lautoka High Court today. An application was made by Vet Nikolik's lawyer if she could be seen by a private doctor. It was stated that Yvette has contracted chickenpox while being in remand. The court granted the application. The case will be called again next Tuesday when Yvette's charges are expected to be consolidated with those of her husband John Nikolik. Both are charged with one count of unlawful importation of illicit drugs, one count of possession of illicit drugs, and one count of failure to declare firearms and ammunition. Volunteerism as a career or a pathway to a career is the new focus for the Employment Ministry. Deputy Permanent Secretary Vilimon Mbalendrokandroka says by volunteering, people will become familiar with working first before taking up job opportunities. Savaratambo reports. From 2012 to date, the ministry had been able to engage 251 local volunteers and 120 retired teachers and nurses who were placed in Nauru, Tuvalu, Vanuatu and Marshall Islands. Uh, you know, from the centre itself, you know, the three employment services provided opportunities for, for unemployed at the moment. We have the Fiji Volunteer Service, which is a major area that we will uh, we'll also be uh, putting priority on in the new year, in the new financial year, because it's a... Uh, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity where young people or unemployed come in to learn uh, work. 
Meanwhile, Permanent Secretary for Employment, Salasay Nindaunambun, highlighted Fiji voluntary services with two other services working together under the National Employment Centre. In the latest budget, there is also a significant amount that has been allocated into these areas in terms of the formal employment services. The budget is 742000 and in terms of the Fiji volunteer services, it's over one million in terms of the programs that we have to run under the Fiji volunteer services. The Minister will continue to work with regional neighbours to expand this program through our development cooperation with other regional countries. This move is strengthened by the provision of $1.2 million as the activity budget for volunteer work in Fiji and overseas. Sawera Tambua, FBC News. Fiji Broadcasting Corporation Manager News and Sports Indra Singh has been elected as the new chair of the Asia Broadcasting Union News Group. Singh was unopposed and unanimously elected by the delegates present at the Global News Forum in Vietnam. He is the first Pacific Islander to hold the position and takes over from Abdul Shefi from Malaysia. The appointment is for two years. Agriculture Minister Nia Seruratu says urban agriculture enhances food security and can support families and individuals who are living with food and nutrition insecurity. He says growing food in urban or peri-urban areas is vital for addressing poverty and nutritious related issues. Seruratu says peri-urban agriculture is an innovative solution to increase access to healthy food and revitalize the economic and social well-being of our municipal communities. The minister believes this will will also help fight NCDs. Uh, one of the major problems that we are facing now in Fiji is non-communicable diseases, NCDs. And it is a big killer in Fiji. In every eight hours, there is one uh, member of uh, our communities uh, uh, who undergoes uh, operations uh, for amputation. In sports later with Jamie Suva, ready to end 23-year-old BOG drought. But up next is Rachel with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Strong, strong Vista arrivals registered. And in growing Fiji, work on Fiji's tallest building progressing well. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Jenny Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coraco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altrigar, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, international Vista arrivals to the Asia and the Pacific region registered a strong growth of 8.2%, up from 7.3% in the December quarter. South Pacific Tourism Organization Chief Executive Christopher Cocker says the positive result reflected a continuation of the solid trend witnessed last year, triggered by strong confidence in the global tourism. Fiji continued to lead the tour top 10 destination with 36.7% followed by French Polynesia at 9.7%. Cocker says the leading market sources include Australia, New Zealand and the US. As announced through the South Pacific Tourism Organization earlier this month, Contiki Finance Limited declared a one cent per share interim dividend. Under KFL's dividend reinvestment plan, shareholders have the opportunity to reinvest the dividend into additional shares. The reinvestment price will be $1.13 per share. The reinvestment price is set at a 5% discount to the average share price over the month prior to the dividend announcement. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. A jump in the benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury bond yield to a five-week high provided support to the greenback this morning. The surge came despite criticism from the president about the impact of strengthening U.S. dollar and rising interest rates on the economy. 
The Japanese yen also gained as traders looked for clues that the Bank of Japan is considering refining its yield curve control policy. In other news, not much movement for the Aussie dollar as focus turns to Australia's CPI release tomorrow. Softer inflation data has been a key reason the Reserve Bank has held interest rates steady. Kiwi traders will be keeping their eyes on New Zealand's trade balance figures for June tomorrow. They are expected to contract from $294 million to $200 million. So let's see how our trade partner currencies perform after these releases. Vinaka. Thanks, Sharon. Taking a look at the currency exchange rates set this morning for the Fijian dollar. Our dollar was on the rise against the Chinese yuan, the Australian dollar, the euro and the Japanese yen and slipped, slight, and slipped slightly against the other currencies we cover. As for the commodities market, prices were down with oil closing at 98 per barrel. Gold closed down as well at 1,222 an ounce and silver closed at 1,534 an ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, work on Fiji's tallest building will be finished by next year. WG Friendship Plaza, situated on McGregor Road in Suva, will be a 30-storey building and house Fiji's biggest warm water swimming pool. Fitika Kumar reports. The China-based WG International Real Estate Company Fiji Limited has so far injected over 64 million Fijian dollars into the economy through this project. This uh, future of the plaza will be have uh, high class multiple function, such as we use uh, green energy, business five star hotel, luxurious apartment, office conference room, warm water swimming pool, smart lift, and so on. The company has taken loan offshore and says the first phase will be completed by the end of this year. In first phase, the building main, main steel structure will be done by the end of this year. Follow up, we will be install all the glass wall, and the last phase will be install the equipment and the finish all the inside job. Currently, the company has employed all foreigners for construction. However, once the project is complete, Around 200 Fijians will get employment. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. And that's business for tonight. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, in Suva target end to 23-year BOG drought. Details after the break. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka, Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Soname Nasori Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Bubble Single Line. Mirchi FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jacks Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. Fiji's Olympic gold medal winning coach Ben Ryan believes that New Zealand did a lot of homework before facing Fiji in the semi-final of the World Cup in San Francisco. Ryan says Fiji put up a great fight, but it wasn't good enough against the fired-up All Blacks who had the basics right. John Wesley College will be represented in the under-17, 18 and 19 grades at the Dean's quarterfinals this Saturday. In the last few years, the school has risen to powerhouse status in the Eastern Zone and with their current support mechanism, they hope to soon rule the national finals as well. John Tombore with this report. The families of students at John Wesley College from Raiwanga played a vital role in the qualification of three grades from the school to the Dean's quarterfinals. Everybody has put in the effort, the family effort, all scholars or teachers in particular. Uh, it's really been a, a new united effort from uh, all stakeholders. The school principal says the support from the corporate bodies within Roy Wanga has been crucial in their preparation. I must thank the Lord uh, for the awesome uh, support from uh, corporate sponsors. It's just uh, has been a source of inspiration to the students. And it has been 
uh, one of the reasons why we uh, have come this far in the competition. The players have taken a holistic approach for the preparation as they will be up against some of the giants of secondary school rugby. Rotulahula have been there, they've won the trophy already. So there is something that the boys are trying to think about and work out and prepare themselves well. So for what we've been doing is that we are trying to make them better prepared holistically. The quarterfinals this weekend of the Dean's competition will mean a lot for John Wesley College. Apart from winning the competition, it is also a chance for them to set new standards and tradition for this Roy Wanga Bay school. John Tabori, FBC Sports. Suva football coach Gurjit Singh is doing a lot of work with his strikers ahead of the semi-final clash against Lambasa in the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants this weekend. Singh will hope to field a fired-up team knowing there'll be no second chances this time around. Marcel Prasad reports. The Suva football side hopes to carry the same momentum when they defeated Nandi 2-1 in the final group match last weekend. It's very positive that we can see goals are coming in and tough game is coming up next. So, good win, getting three points, but uh, we are looking forward for the next win. Their next opponent is Lambasa, and Singh says it won't be an easy ride in the semi-final. It's a very strong team, but uh, we'll try to do our best and try to win. FGFA president Rajesh Patel says the excitement has been building up as three days remain before the semis. They have been a good uh, you know, ambassador in cooperation with Fiji football for the tournaments we hold there. And there's uh, nothing we see the fans will... Uh, find it difficult. Uh, it's been 23 years since Suva won the BOG title. The side now has a hope of ending that long drought. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Francesco Molinari has become the first Italian to hoist the British Open title. But the story that's got everyone's attention is former world number one Tiger Woods being in contention again at a major championship. The two putting up an epic showdown on the final day. Today's play of the day is taken from the final round of the 2018 Barbasol Championship where Troy Merritt holed out from 133 yards to make eagle at the par 4 8th hole. Merritt went on to win the championship. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in new media. We see how well the Gorilla Glass 6 will protect the next batch of smartphones. Details after the break. I am Angola Senya. I am a market of Nakas. 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 I am a market Radio Fiji One eh, hingga toka. Radio Fiji One non domui viti. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It's been a great day, quite comfortable. The sun was out for a bit before overcast conditions took over. More so, there's a trough of low pressure lingering over us, which might get us showers later in the week. Taking a look in the west, sunny with cloudy intervals and gusty winds. Eastwards from Pek Suva, same can be said for this side, though the whole day was mostly gloomy. And up north, slight morning showers cross by, but otherwise fine weather here as well. At sea, east to south east winds 10 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 4.43 a.m. with low tide at 11.14 a.m. Sunrise at 6.36. For tomorrow, not too sunny or humid, the conditions will be mild. Tomorrow's temps, the temperatures are glued to high 20s. And looking further on to Thursday, there's build-up of showers, so get your umbrellas already. And that's all from the FPC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked what more should be done to curb overloading issues on our roads. Um, what people should be fine if they're found overloading? Uh, people should know the, the protect, uh, how heavy the stuff to put on the, the, the truck. You're not allowed to go overloaded vehicles like that. If somebody fall and down and get hurt, then 
what's gonna happen. We can put heavy fines on such vehicle drivers. LTA should be more focused on the uh, road where they can avoid all these cases and whereas they can book the care, especially like carriers which can overload and like can cause accident. It need uh, to be uh, more tough a little bit because for uh, our roads need to be no traffic at all and uh, we need fast first in uh, like in the morning so when we're coming to work is when the trucks big trucks are there so it affect our roads uh, especially for Suva in Osori. Recapping the main stories for tonight, three attacks on police in the last 24 hours, one demotion and easy sentences for naval officers, and Ben Padarathan, lawyer convicted of forgery. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment this week, we're asking, were you happy with the Fiji Sevens team's performance at the Rugby World Cup? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day sent in by Sarah. This was taken in the Marmanu the Islands. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe. Good night. My name is Nan, I'm from Bwase. As Prenny North is famous, Radio Fiji 2 is also famous. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. I like to listen to Radio Fiji 2 for listening to Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country. I am Uncle King, Singatoka Town, Taxi Driver, and from Rugby Fame, Radio Fiji 2 is famous. Radio Fiji 2 is the country of the country.